Hi, so I'm going to talk a little bit about batteries, specifically actually lead acid batteries. Then I'm going to show you three ways to improve them, including two ways to get an extra 30% out of them, or if you like, to increase the energy density by 30%. And then I'm going to make some shameless plugs for the shop. Because obviously we sell some of this stuff and one of the reasons we sell this stuff is so that we can continue doing the videos and we can continue with our work. So the plugs will be shameless and, you know, please do visit the shop and buy some stuff and help us out. Anyway, I don't know if you've ever really looked at these and thought much about these. This is a lead acid battery. It's a little Macklin one actually. Um, Macklin no longer exists, but it's a 6 volt, 1.2 amp hour little lead acid battery. Now, lead acid actually accounts for something like 55% of the total battery market. It's the most used battery in the world. And the reason is, everybody understands it, it's a stable chemistry, it's 150 years old, and everybody has, knows how to use it, and it's relatively cheap to make. So these are singularly the most used batteries. Now, obviously, they have lots of downsides to them, an absolute load of downsides, and people have been doing research in these on how to make them better for a very long time. Uh, and the first time I actually began to think about this was when we looked at the ultra battery. Now, obviously, I did a video previously on that and became aware of the ultra battery and decided to share that with you. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the ultra battery. It's an Australian thing, uh, lots of research there, um, well worth having a look at it. And what they did was essentially wrap the negative, that is the lead plate, with the carbon, pop the whole thing back together, and they suddenly got a more power dense. Um, device because it was kind of half battery, half capacitor. It was still as energy dense because they put everything back together, but it was more power dense. Now, I don't know if you've ever taken one of these apart. This particular one is called an absorbent glass mat battery, and you'll see why in a second. But if you cut the top off of that, what you'll see inside is three cells, and in each of those little containers is a little cluster like this. In that cluster, we've got three plates made of lead and two plates made of lead oxide. What the Australians did was separate everything out, and you can do that just by pulling those apart and then levering out the lead oxide plates. And once the lead oxide plates come out, they look like that. They're actually wrapped in that material there. And this is an absorbent glass mat. All of the sulfuric acid is in there. Now you'll notice gloves, because I'm working with sulfuric acid and with lead oxide. Obviously not something you want to get on your hands. But that is wrapped in there and it's all leaved up like that. If you pull them apart a little bit, you can unleave it, take them out, take off the absorbent glass mat, and you're left with your separate plates. Now, there are lots of different kinds of lead acid battery. The absorbent glass mat one tends to be in these smaller ones because it's more stable. You do get a lot of flooded batteries, in which case you pour the acid out and save it in a container. You'll see that the um, lead is actually in little pockets and you can take the pockets out and then you'll be able to access these things here. All the Australians did was to take this and, and a bit of carbon and they wrapped the carbon around the lead plate, put the whole thing back together and put it back in its case. And that carbon acted as kind of half a supercapacitor, half a battery. And that's why we got an improvement in energy density and improvement in the lifetime as well, incidentally. But like I said, there is a video already on this that you can hunt out on my channel and it'll go a bit more into the ultra battery. <coughs> but as part of the research in that, when I was looking at something and I was thinking about them, what I always tend to do is do the background research. I don't want to be a little um, too crazy in what I do, so I tend to look to see if there is some backup to some of the ideas that I have. And lo and behold, there are two great papers. One's called Study on a New Single Flow Acid Copper Lead Oxide Battery, which I thought was really interesting, and High Potential Zinc Lead Dioxide Rechargeable Cells. Now, oddly enough, both of these are, are constructed the same way. So the basic construction of this is the same. What changes is the electrolyte, and we'll go into that in a minute. The, each of them have their own sort of peculiarities and interest. So the copper lead battery was more of a flow battery, we could still make it static. And the zinc lead battery was a static battery, but it tended to have a high self-discharge. They also have different voltages. But still, both very, very interesting because they're made the same way. <coughs> the way they're made is that this lead plate is just pulled out and disposed of. You have immediately reduced the weight of the battery by at least 30-40%. If you reduce the weight of the battery, you 
incrementally put the uh, battery energy density up by the same amount you've reduced it by. Now obviously we need to replace that plate with the opposite side of the battery and the question is what do you replace it with? Now in both of these papers they used a carbon plate and I was thinking okay we can't use a carbon plate because we'll have to carve out the carbon, we'll have to do uh, things to it, it'll be very difficult to do and we'll keep breaking things so what would be a good way of doing it? And then I came up with this. What I've got here is a bit of stainless steel. Now this is some um, 2000 mesh I happen to have around. You don't need to use this. There's also this stuff, which you can buy on the roll. This is insect screen, actually. And this one's stainless steel because it's meant for houses by the sea. And the stainless steel mesh here is plenty good enough and that's quite cheap and you can buy it on the roll for a few pounds or hundreds of meters because it's used in the building trade. So that's something you can just get for yourself. Now I used this and I put a little bit of tape around here to protect this area of the stainless steel. It's ordinary solid tape incidentally. And what we want there is some kind of material that is both conductive and resistant to acid. And what we have actually is this stuff. This is high density polyethylene and it's filled with a carbon black. So this is both conductive and resistant to the acid. So if somehow we could combine those two materials, then we would have the perfect electrode material. And it's stunningly easy to do that. All you actually do is cut a piece of your high density polyethylene off, wrap it around there, and we start to get a plate like that, and then we need to seal it. But this stuff seals with an ordinary iron. If I take a piece of cloth, it takes out the fluctuations in the table underneath. A piece of greaseproof paper to stop this sticking to the greaseproof paper when I iron it another piece of paper on top to stop it sticking to the iron when I iron it, an ordinary kitchen iron, and just go over that, what you'll end up with is a plate like that. Now that plate is a stainless steel core with two sides of high density polyethylene filled with conductive carbon black. So it's impervious to the acid and it is conductive, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. Now obviously this bit of sellotape I put up here protects this length of um, stainless steel from acid attack and that's where we're going to attach to so we have a wonderful plate this isn't enough what you need is a high surface carbon on top of it and we're using this stuff which is the same stuff that we used in the ultra battery now this is the carbon felt that we sell on the shop and i'll put a link to that in the description as well so you can buy this stuff from us and all you have to do is cut a piece to the size of plate you want and there you go you have your new battery plate that will replace the lead plates. Now obviously these weigh quite a lot and this weighs next to nothing. It's about 5% of the weight of this. So this is about 20 grams I think and that's about 2 grams, something like that. A gram or something. It's really very much lighter than this and that's the whole point of it. It needs to be that much lighter and still perform the same function so that we get that massive increase in energy density because 30-40% is a massive increase. Now I'm going to put the titles of these two papers in the description as well so you can get those papers for yourself, have a read yourself and see what we're talking about. Now once we've made our electrode plate, we put it together with our oxide plate and those two, with a separator in between them, become the new battery. And here it is. I've made this little battery here. And here we've got a very tiny little plate that I just showed you how to make and here's the lead oxide plate. I've rewrapped the lead oxide plate with the absorbent glass mat and then I've filled it with electrolyte. Now here's where the difference comes in. If I want to make a copper lead oxide battery, then I would use copper sulphate as my electrolyte, and this is one molar copper sulphate. If I want to make a zinc lead oxide battery, then I'd use zinc sulphate, and here is the one molar zinc sulphate. So you make it exactly the same way, your carbon plate, your absorbent glass mat or your separator and your lead oxide plate and then you fill it with either one of those two electrolytes. Now already here it will have had sulfuric acid in there because that piece of material is soaked in sulfuric acid. So when this reacts the zinc or the copper gets deposited in the carbon. The copper sulfate or the zinc sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. Then when we discharge it, the sulfuric acid attacks the metal, strips the metal back off, and that's how we get our battery. And because that carbon is so much lighter, the battery is so much more energy dense, about 30 to 40% more energy dense. So instead of being about 30 watt hours a kilo, which is what the original lead acid was, 
This ends up being about 45 watt hours a kilo. And to give some perspective on that, what you're looking at is roundabout nickel cadmium for the same price as lead acid. And I thought that was awesome when I discovered these two peppers. There are a couple of drawbacks. Um, one of them is that the copper sulfate one only operates at 1.2 volts, but operates for a very long time. The zinc sulfate one operates at 2.4 volts, but a shorter amount of time, and there's a little more self-discharge that goes in on with the zinc sulfate. But if you want the details, have a look at those papers and you can be able to pick out the details of that. I think the really key thing is that it's such a simple job to make that plate. If I can find it again, I'm not too sure where to put it now. Ah, it's such a simple job to make this plate. You wrap your stainless steel in the high density carbon black filled polyethylene, pop your carbon felt on top, put it back into your lead acid battery after throwing away the lead, or weighing it in and getting some money back on it. You pop that back in there and you have made a brand new battery. This stuff incidentally isn't on the shop yet, but we will be putting it on the shop probably tomorrow to be able to buy squares of this. The Carbon felt is already on there. This is a 100% carbon in a felt form. We use it for supercapacitors, uh, use it for the ultra battery, and now we can use it for this new modification of the lead battery to improve the energy density that much. You might have noticed that this is clear. It began its life like that, and that's why I did this one, because you can see that it was once blue, and now it's gone clear. When it's clear like that, then it is charged. All of the copper, because I began with copper sulfate, is now in that plate there, the carbon plate. And the copper sulfate blue is now sulfuric acid and it has changed its color. And we've got about 400 milliamp hours in that tiny little battery there. And just to demonstrate that, here is our motor. And I'm gonna run our motor. So they connect that up. There we go, one on there. One on there. And there we go, buzzing away. Like I said, it's got about 400 milliamp hours in there, so it's gonna go for a very long time indeed. So there we go. I thought there were three really interesting ways to modify a lead acid battery. A lot of people would like to get rid of lead acid altogether, and that would be nice. But one thing would be just to improve the energy density make it cheaper to produce, make it more efficient, uh, and remember, we, it's already the world's most used battery. So if you look at something like wrapping the negative, uh, the lead, with carbon to make the ultra battery, or removing that lead altogether and replacing it with a stainless steel and plastic with a carbon felt on top of it to make a brand new style of battery using an electrolyte of one molar copper sulfate or one molar zinc sulfate. You can improve the energy density of the battery tremendously. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. And just one more plug, you can buy those um, carbon felts and that high density carbon black filled polyethylene on the shop and the link is in the description. And apart from that, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.